Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this session, we are going to look into Excel online connector within the project which we have been doing since last two session where we are creating the Excel uploader tool and so far we have developed trigger functionality where user is uploading the Excel file inside the document library and then we are extracting the details of that particular Excel file. Now it's time to build the functionality where we can extract the data from the Excel worksheet which we have uploaded. For that reason, we are going to look into Excel online connector. So let's jump into the Power Automate portal where we have left earlier. So guys, I am inside the Power Automate portal and here we have seen that we have used a trigger called when a file is created in a folder and then we have created the application context object variable within that we have kept all the variable which we are going to use in the program then we have used this get data from uploaded excel this is the rest api call where we are making the rest api call to read the excel file and that is what we are doing in this step now the other step which we are going to create is grab the document library id from this step get data from uploaded excel and we will also grab the file id the excel file id from this particular step so how we will do that let's look into that so first step i am going to add a compose action over here so i will write here compose so over here this is the data operation connector and within that i am going to use the compose action which you already aware about and i am going to give it a name i am going to rename it and i will call it as document library id so to extract the document library id we need to use this expression so let's write the expression over here i will increase some size so over here you will see that i am going to write something called outputs outputs of previous step the name of the previous step is get data from uploaded excel and make sure that the space will be replaced with the underscore so it should be get underscore data underscore from underscore uploaded underscore excel then we have to make sure that we are using something called the body so whatever the output which is coming over here we are going to use it so i will write over here body and then we need to specify the parent reference so i need to tell there is another key which is exist inside the body and that is called as parent reference and then i need to specify make sure that you are writing the giving the correct spelling over here so it should be reference reference and over here we need to specify the drive id so there is another key that is called drive id so with the help of this code we can extract the drive id that is our document library id click ok it is throwing an error that is because we did a mistake over here there is a syntax mistake so make sure that that is inside a single quotes so you should put the single quotes and press ok now you will see that it has picked up now next i need to extract the id of an excel file so how i will extract it so i will come over here and i will put an another compose action over here so i will search for compose select this action i will rename it give it a name so i am going to give a name that is called file id and over here i need to specify the id so id how i will get it i will get it from this expression so i need to write it over here i will select the dynamic content over here first let me write over here body and body of our earlier step which is get data from uploaded excel make sure that you are writing the same statement over here get data from uploaded underscore excel and there is something called id so this way you are able to get the id of your file which we have uploaded so now it has picked up that make sure that you are saving it so once it is being done then we have to proceed for the next step but prior to proceeding to the next step let's test it so whatever we have built so far so what i am going to do i am going to push the excel file which i am having to the document library at this location and once i will push it then it this workflow once i push it then this workflow gets trigger and it will execute it and then we will test it what is the output we are getting so let's do it 
So over here I am having this Excel file. Let me open it. You will find that this is the same Excel file which I have explained earlier. So let me drop this Excel file to the document library now. Now I am inside the document library and over here we are having this folder. So let me go inside that and let me drop the Excel file which I have shown you. So I will come over here, click on upload, click on files, employee award data and now it gets uploaded. The moment it gets uploaded, the flow will trigger in some time. So we have to wait for it. One thing you should remember that this is not very instantaneous. If you are expecting that you have uploaded it and directly it will execute it. No, it is not like that. Sometime you have to wait for 2-3 minutes so that Power Automate program gets executed. So let's wait for it and let's go to the run history and where we can verify that whether it has started execution or not. So I am inside the flow and to check the run history I need to click on my flows and over here this is the tool which we are making we need to click on this three dot that is called context menu and over here you will get the run history you need to click on run history and you will find that it gets executed so let's click on this and let's identify that what it has returned now over here you will find that it has return as the document library ID and then it has also returned the file ID this is the Excel file ID which we are going to use to retrieve the worksheet data so now let's proceed further and let's build it further to extract the worksheet information which we have uploaded now I will come over here the next step I need to extract the data of the worksheet so how I will do that I will come here I will click on add action and over here I will select Excel online business and the thing which I am looking for is the get worksheets so I need to click on this action from the connector Excel online business select this one and we need to specify these three values to get the further information so let's do it so over here I am going to specify the custom value over here so I will select into custom value and again as usual we need to specify the variables and our variable is application context where application context and the key where our site address is there that is site address so we need to specify over here site address okay one thing done the next parameter we need to specify is the document library so from where we can get it so this is the ID we need to specify over here so you will see that it is giving us the just click on enter custom value and over here you will find that document library ID you need to select this one and this is from the dynamic content now next we need to specify the file ID so from where we will get it exactly this we will get it from this file ID so I need to select this one that is done save it now we got the worksheet information from the Excel file which we have uploaded to the document library now the next step we need to rename it so let's rename it and give a valid name we will give it a name now we are done with the rename now next we need to create the table so how we will do that this is very important step because we are going to extract the data from the Excel using this table so we need to create this table so we will tell that Excel online business and over here you will find that there is something called create table so I'm going to use this action and over here we need to specify the location so I'm going to use the inter custom location custom value and again I need to specify the expression variables where application context and over here we need to specify the site address site address okay now here document library as usual we need to specify the inter custom value and the custom value we are getting from the earlier step which we have done over here that is the compose document library ID so I will select that one and I will specify this one now once it is being done we need to specify the file on which file we want to create the table so I need to specify the ID over here the ID which we have created over here next table range if you remember we have created the table range inside the application inside the application context variable so we need to specify this because our data belongs to these ranges. so I need to specify over here so I will come over here click on expression variables where application context and then over here we need to specify table range this is the key name where we are keeping our value so I will call it as table range okay so now we are done with this step 
So now let's understand what we have done in this step. So guys, basically we are creating the table dynamically within the Power Automate. So for that reason, we are specifying the range. And if you want to create the table inside an Excel, what you are doing, you need to select the range that you want to keep it inside the table. Then you are selecting the range and coming over here and clicking on this icon. So it will create the table inside the Excel and then you can retrieve the data from the Excel. So that is what we are doing dynamically inside the Power Automate program. Next step, we need to extract the data which is existing in this tables. So let's do it in the next step. So let's jump into the Power Automate portal. So to do that, I will come over here, click on add an action and over here, I will select Excel online and over here, I need to select get tables over here. So I will select that and again I need to specify the URL over here, site address. So I will come here, select expression and again I will write variables and within that I am going to specify the name of the variable that is var application context and then I need to specify the key that is our site address key. So I will write site address, click on OK. Now next step, I need to specify where our document library is. So I need to specify the ID of the document library, which we have already done. So you will come over here and you will see that you can type output and over here you can get outputs of document library ID. I will select this one. Next the file ID. I will do file or write outputs and I will select the file ID. So now we are done with this step. Now next, once we get the tables, I need to list all the rows which exist inside the table. So how we will do that? For that, we are having another action inside the Excel connector. So let's use that as well. I will come over here, click on add an action and then over here, search for list row and that is part of Excel online. So over here, you will find that there is something called list rows present in a table. So this is the action we required. And again, we need to specify over here the custom value. So for that, I need to come here, write again variables where application context and over here specify site address. Okay. Now next document library as usual into custom value expression, dynamic content outputs, document library ID file. I need to again write outputs and select file ID. Now over here in the table, we need to write a formula. So what is that formula? Let's look into that. So over here, we need to select the table, the first table, which we are having inside our Excel file, which we have created dynamically over here. The worksheet gets uploaded. We created a table. Now we extracted the table with the help of this action. And now we are extracting the rows from that table. And over here, I need to specify which table. So there is only one table, but even though it is one table, we will write this expression that is called first. I want first table and I need to specify the output of get table. So I need to write output of get underscore table and over here having get tables. Make sure that you are writing correct spelling and then we need to specify single quotes body slash value and over here we need to put question mark and I need to specify the ID. So with the help of this formula, it will grab the first table which exists inside our Excel file. And what is the first table over here? This table which we have created. And by default, it will give the name table one. I will click on OK, but which I am grabbing directly. I am not grabbing through the name. I am grabbing the ID of that particular table. So this formula will return me the table ID which is created dynamically over here. So now once we are done with this, so now we have completed the Excel online connector step. Now we are done with this step and this is what I wanted to demonstrate you in this session. In the next session, whatever the data which we have extracted or say whatever the data which we got inside the row of the Excel that we will select it and then we will filter it that we will do in the next session. So let's wrap the session before closing it. So guys, in this session, we have learned that how to extract the document library ID, how to extract file ID from the Excel file, which we have uploaded. And then we have seen that how to use Excel business online connector. And these are the four actions we have 
scene where we have understand how to get the information about the excel worksheet which is being uploaded to the document library then we have looked into how to create the table dynamically whenever we want to get the information from the uploaded excel once it is being done then we proceed further and we have looked into how to get the table information which we have created over here in this step and then over here we have extracted the information about the table which has created and last we have seen that how to list the rows which is present in the table which is being created over here with the help of this formula so we are selecting the first table of our uploaded excel and that table we have created dynamically and that is what i wanted to demonstrate to you in this session in the next session we will take it further and learn about how to use the select action from the data operation connector as well as filter action from the data operation connector so on this note i am stopping over here see you in the next session till then bye bye take care